And then we're going to go to Mark chapter 1, verse 21, 22, 23, and 24. Luke 22 and 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Mark chapter 1, verse 21. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue, I mean, knows what the synagogue is, okay, a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. I want to preach to you on this talk tonight. Why does the devil go to church? Why does the devil go to church? You can be seated. Jesus, Jesus. This message is meant to help us uh, evaluate how we worship and to warn us to avoid Satan's influence even at church. Every time Jesus met someone that was demon-possessed, he kicked the demons out. And this case here, though, we just read was, was very unusual because of where it took place in the very house of God. And you may think, well, why in the world would a man possessed demons be interested in going to the house of God? Well, let me answer a couple, give you a couple answers on why the devil goes to church. Number one is because the devil is a very religious person. Satan and his demons are even rather orthodox in some of their beliefs. A.W. Tozer said the devil is a better theologian than any of us and is a devil still. And, you know, of course it doesn't matter just, you know, just what you believe. And, you know, just what you believe of. Uh, that's not all it is to it. James 2 and 19 says, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. You see, the devil, well, he knows there's only one God. The problem is, is he don't worship God. When he shows up at church, it isn't for true worship, but it's rather for false worship. You see, Satan's religion is a false religion, but it's a religion still. He doesn't even mind if we show up for worship just as long as it's false worship. You see, he loves to see people go to church to, to talk about other worshipers. I'm telling you why the devil goes to church. He loves to see people go to church and, and, and don't go in and do what they're supposed to do, but they're going to sit there and they're going to talk about those that worship. Yeah, or they're going to talk about the worship leader. Or they're going to talk about the preacher or the musician. He loves to see us go to church and uplift our own goodness. You see, he loves it when we're preoccupied with other things. He loves to see people that come to church and sit next to their boyfriend and girlfriend and want to sit over there and hug on them the whole time doing church. He loves to see those things. Yes. It makes him happy. Talk about why the devil goes to church. Uh -huh. He loves to see people that go to church that just sit on a pew because it's tradition. Right. He loves to see those things. Amen. He loves to see it when we're preoccupied with this or that and and we're worried about what so-and-so thinks about us. 
You know, when he looks around, it, it makes me wonder sometimes if he's not sitting around uh, while you're getting dressed and and, 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 and he maybe he's in the corner, Brother Nineveh, and he's saying, oh, I don't know, I, I really don't want them to go to church because, you know, there's a possibility that when they get there, they're really going to worship in spirit and truth. There's a possibility that they're not going to worry about their boyfriend or girlfriend. They're not going to worry about this person or that person. They're not going to worry about taking a tithing envelope on the back of a pew and begin to write all over to pass notes. They're not worried about that. But you know what happens when you come to church? The devil's here too. He comes as well. He's worried. But whenever you come to church and you start doing your little, your, your little uh, things of, of, of disturbing other people, whenever you start to lean over while the preacher's reading the scripture or while the preacher's preaching and you begin to talk to somebody else, you know what the devil's doing? He's putting a big old grin on his face. He's happy about it. So whenever you come to church, at first he may be worried, but when you get here and you start talking to your friends during service and you start doing this and you're not paying attention, you're not even working. Do you think Sister Jennifer gets up here and tells everybody, come on, church worship, just to clear her lungs out or to stretch her vocal cords? No. She knows as well. Brother Nedeville knows as well. I know as well that there's a devil here that's sitting in a corner and he's laughing at those that not worshiping, that is not praising, they're playing around, they're goofing around, they're laughing, they're cutting up. That's why the devil goes to church. Because when he comes to church and he sees those things like that, oh, I'm gonna go on about my business. I ain't got nothing to worry about in Watson. Come on. He loves to hear our critical comments about the worship leader or the pastor or the preacher or anybody else. That puts a smile on the devil. Do you realize most of us in here and that have come through here are making the devil happy? You see, the devil loves it when we don't put our hearts into praising God. He likes just seeing us go through the motions. He, he, you know, he can stand anything. He can stand anything but worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. Because when you begin to worship God in spirit and in truth, not out of going through the motions, not out of, I just think I've got to do this, but I'm going to worship you, God, in spirit and in truth. The devil then begins to go back and look. This is why I was worried. This is why I was concerned that he or she was going to go to church. They're doing something that I can't stand. Because John 4, 24 tells us that God is a spirit and they that worship him must do what? Worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Let, let, me, let, me, let me clear something up to you. The devil doesn't care if you listen as long as you don't hear. He doesn't care if you listen. In other words, while we're writing our little notes, while we're leaning over talking to this one, while we're not paying attention to anything, maybe we got our checkbook out, we're writing out bills for next week. Maybe we're balancing it out. Maybe we're looking at the calendar for next week for work or whatever. We're not really, you, we, we hear, we're listening to what's being said. But that doesn't bother him. Because we're not hearing it. And oh, you, some of you look at me like a deer in the head. Like. You're listening with your ears. He's got no problem with that. But when you begin to hear with your heart, that's where he has a problem. And I'm going to tell some of you today that the devil's not worried about you because all you're doing is listening. You're not hearing. You're not absorbing it. You're not taking it in. So he's not worried too much. You know who else he ain't worried about too much? It's those that can go out and have a good time on Saturday but can't get up on Sunday and go to church. He ain't worried about them. He ain't worried about those that can 
post pictures on Facebook, having a good time on Saturday night, but can't get up on Sunday and go to church. Amen. He's not worried about them at all. Right. He's already got them. Yeah. I told you I wasn't going to get up and run or anything. Hey. You see, the devil is opposed. Listen carefully. The devil is opposed to Christianity. He's against it. But he isn't opposed to churchianity. In other words, he doesn't care how many times you go to church. He doesn't care if we had a revival that lasted six weeks here and it went seven days a week and you made it to all 42 of those days. Seven times six is 42. When I went to school, I hope it still is. I don't know about the Common Core math, you know. But, but you made it to all 42 days. But you know what? He's still saying, oh, I ain't got nothing to worry about because all they, did, all they did was listen. They didn't hear. All they did was went through the motions. You see, the demons know who Jesus is. The one in the synagogue, the one in the church did. He believed in the very incarnation of Christ. That he was both God and man at the same time. How many believe that? I hope so. The devil believes it. You sure do. You see, the demon clearly identified Christ's humanity by calling him Jesus of Nazareth. But he also, in the same thing, in the same verse, verse 24, I believe it was, he also identified Christ's deity by calling him the Holy One of God. The church, the church, now who am I talking about when I say hear me. Some of you don't believe you are. The church. You sound like you've been in a bed with pneumonia and God took your voice. When the church, who is the church? Must surely be on guard against false doctrine, without a doubt. I mean, we must be on guard. But the danger we are sometimes less aware of is false worship. We must always guard ourselves against dead religion. Amen? We get so wrapped up in guarding ourselves of false doctrine. We get so wrapped up. Well, this one don't preach the way I do. This one don't believe exactly the way I do. Then we all of a sudden we start concentrating on this and we let other things begin to creep in. And when other things begin to creep, you know why they're creeping in? Because we're only listening, we're not hearing. You understand what I'm saying? So if we begin to hear what the Word of God is saying, we can guard ourselves against not only false doctrine, but those that come in with false worship. We cannot afford to become, here, here goes that word, y'all know I love to say this word. We cannot afford to become complacent. We can't afford to become stagnated. We can't afford to get comfortable in our chairs. Not physically, spiritually, amen. We can't afford to become complacent and nonchalant about our worship of God. I posted something a little while ago on Facebook, I believe it was, just a couple hours or so ago. I said, those that don't want to hear about worship, don't want to worship. Those that don't want to hear about praying, don't want to pray. Those that don't want to hear about giving, don't want to give. Those that want to hear about doing a work for the kingdom of God, don't want to do a work for the kingdom of God. And you wonder why the devil goes to church. The devil comes to church every time you do. And even when you don't, he comes to church so he can laugh at us. He 
Always. Yes. Always. Reevaluate why we worship and how we worship. But Brother Stewart, I'm not an emotional person. I don't get all excited. I mean, I'm not one to get up and run. I'm not one to get up and just do this outward expression. That's fine. You're not here to worship for me to look at you anyway. But I can promise you this. If you're not just listening, but you're hearing what the word of God is saying, and you're truly worshiping him, all that matters is that God knows your heart, that he knows your intentions, that yeah, they may not get up, they may not express things the way this one does, they may not shout, they may not roam the aisles, but I want to look upon them. I believe sometimes he looks on some of us that are just sitting there with our arms in the air, and we're praying on us even better even a greater depth than those that are putting on a show yes, amen. what are you talking about they put on a show yeah they do I've seen it you've seen it you felt it in your spirit and if you haven't well you should have been here and not listening because you would know the difference and false worship than worship that is in spirit and truth. Amen. The word says concerning dead worship by dead churches and believers. It says in 2 Timothy 3 and 5. Having a form of godliness. Having a form of godliness. You know when somebody passes by this church. And they see that sign. And it says Pentecostals are watching. You know what's going through their mind. Some godly people in there. That's some holy people. That's some holiness people. That's some holy rollers up in there. Do we want to disappoint them when they walk in the door? We want to make a big liar. We want to make them be one that's telling the greatest truth. But what happens most of all is when they see that name Pentecost on the outside, when they come in with an expectancy of somebody that's worshiping God, doesn't care if their skirt is spun completely around their body or not, doesn't care if the lady's hair is hanging all over the floor, doesn't care if the men's shirts are all tough or shoes are kicked off. They ain't looking for somebody that's all stuck up with a lot of starch in their collar, but they're looking for somebody that says, I'm worshiping God. the host. 
Ghost, the person that he was possessed. You see, Satan's ultimate goal is to have control. He can, he can possess those who don't have the Holy Ghost within. Oh, well, I received the Holy Ghost 10 years ago. I'm good. Stop that stinking thinking. You see, he can't possess those true followers of Christ. And those true followers of Christ are not the ones that's listening, but the ones that's hearing. That's right. You see the correlation there? Listening, hearing. Mm, I don't know about you, but I feel the Holy Ghost. If you don't feel the Holy Ghost, you're more than welcome to come stand up here with me. But he can't feel those that are, he, he, he can't come in and possess those that are filled. He can't come in and possess those that are true worshipers, that worship God in spirit and truth. Because you see, when God comes in and fills you with the Holy Ghost, the first thing he does is cleanse that old heart. You see, what happens is when you're praying and you're seeking the Holy Ghost, you listen to what people are saying in your ears. You know the old cartoon, the old adage with the little devil here and the little angel here? Some of you has been a long time, but whenever you were seeking the Holy Ghost, tell me you wasn't listening to somebody telling you what to say. And you was trying your best. But then over here on the other ear, you begin to listen to something else that says, oh, you can't do this. You can't get this. You don't have a chance. You don't, and there's no way you can get through this. And all you're just listening. That's all you're doing. But what happens with someone that's seeking the Holy Ghost? Now watch this. They stop listening to what the good brother or sister is telling them. They stop listening to what the little devil is telling them over here. And they begin to hear. Well, how do I begin to hear? Is when you say, I submit. And you start to give it all over to him. And whenever you begin to hear, when you begin to hear what the Lord is saying, when you begin to hear with your heart, you tuned out with your ears the voices of man and the voices of evil. But you begin to hear with your heart the very voice of God. That's when you begin to realize that yes, Manipulate us. 
He tries to hinder us in our work for God and the growth of our faith. Yes, right. I don't know how many of you noticed that our brother Nettleville did that at about 4 o'clock this afternoon I was here. I was reading over this and I came up to the pulpit for some, to put this announcement thing up here and I saw this rock. And you know, as I looked at this rock, you remember what this rock said? You remember what this rock said? Some of you fish and sink down further than you already are. <laughs> Too many of us is bringing the devil to church. He's manipulating us. He's hindering us. Some of you have gotten so frustrated because we supposed to already been started on the building in the back. The devil is going to come to church whether we're on fire for God or not. Because he's going to do everything he can. If the church is on fire, I don't know about you, but I want Pentecostals of Watson to be a section that is on fire. I want it to be smoking hot. I want it to be a smoking session, not a not smoking session. And that you 